Hello guys, welcome to my latest video. Today's video is going to be about file sharing with FTP protocol and uh, in a local LAN or if you want in an online, completely online remote connection. So today I'm going to show you how to make a server um, to share between computers remotely located with different IPs. Uh, just for the sake of this video, this time around I'm using a um, a laptop and my desktop computer as you might notice my other desktop computer is uh, shut down just because I want to show you how to how it works uh, with a different IP and um, this computer is actually connected with uh, my cell phone uh, sharing hotspot uh, Wi-Fi so um, it's it has a completely different IP it should be the connection should be a uh, foreign you know external we're gonna go to my IP I'm gonna show you that I'm not lying. This is actually a working thing. Um, I'm gonna check my external IP here. As you can see, this is the IP. And let's see the IP of this other computer. So this other computer has a completely different IP than this one so we are uh, connected in different networks so let's see if it works um first we're gonna make the server uh well this tutorial is gonna be about this um ftp client and server which is named filezilla you have a lot of, of other options most of them are paid but this one is open source and it's the way to go and it's the one i prefer and it's the only one that i have experience with so this is why i made a tutorial so this is basically the client. You should download the client first. It's so easy. You just open Google. You just type FileZilla client and you just download the client itself. So FileZilla client. Here you should be greeted with the download page and you just download the client. Once you download the client, you want to install it and you will be um, greeted with this little window, which is the client. So um, now we're going to minimize this and we're going to install the server. So for the server it's the same thing, but in, instead of client you just type server obviously. Like that. And you're just going to, uh, you know, download the server file here. Make sure it says server and we're going to have something like this. This is going to be the icon. So we're going to go and install the server files. Uh, it's going to be very straightforward. You just want to make sure to select next, next, next. Um, leave the the you know the the default port there uh, next and start interface as setup completes. So um, so once it's installed, you will be uh, ready to go. So this is gonna be the server. I'm gonna show you how to configure your server um, right now. But before doing that, very quick, we're gonna go here and open a CMD. Make sure to open a common window. And let's gonna type uh, IP config. Once you type IP config, you will make sure to locate your default gateway. Um, I'm probably 90% of the viewers here are using the routers, right? So um, we're gonna um, identify the IP of the router because we're gonna open them port forward the ports. So uh, this is the IP. What it is? You just wanna copy this IP inside your web browser. Uh, in my case, I have Chrome, so we're gonna type that IP that we got here, which is um, 192 uh, So here you, you will be greeted with whatever uh, you know uh, login page you have for your router. In my case, this is the one I, ca I got, which is a Cisco DPC 3828D. Uh, Want to make uh, sure to login probably the, the password and the username is going to be admin admin or cisco admin or admin cisco whatever so you just try some uh, until you you can access it um this time around we're going to go to application gaming I'll make sure to go to port uh, you know port range forwarding so we're going to click that and here you will see that we got a um, configuration chart to open ports. Make sure to start the port probably at 10 and finish it at 60,000. 
uh, as well as here um, select both TCP and UDP and here you're gonna make sure to put the IP the local IP of the computer that we are right now right now using so um, make sure you open here we're gonna go to IPv4 address and this is gonna be the local IP of our computer so make sure to put that IP there and once you've done the changes you just go all the way down and make sure to click it on save settings so um, so now we just open the ports of our router so people can access through our router and now we're gonna open the firewall from our operating system so right now I'm using a Windows 10 operating system we're gonna go to control panel we're gonna go to Windows Defender firewall and here we're gonna go to advanced settings and here we're gonna go into uh, inbound rules and new rule so here in new rule we're gonna go and select port what I'm gonna, we're gonna go next um, TCP is the one the option that we got and here into the specific local ports we're gonna go and type 21 comma and 20 so once you type those two ports we're gonna go next allow connection and next and then we're gonna select all the three of options and the next and then um, type whatever name we want so maybe we want to type FTP and then you're gonna just uh, click on finished uh, I already done that so we're gonna see here something like this this is gonna be the newest created inbound rule and we're gonna close this and now the um, you know the firewall is gonna access it's gonna let the all the connection from those ports uh, to come in so now we're ready to um, you know configure our server um, this is gonna be the obviously this the the computer is gonna host host the server itself so um, you're gonna make sure to to uh, type here in host the local host and here the port is gonna be the default that we we selected in the install procedure so uh, it's gonna be the same uh, if you want you're gonna put a password in my case I'm not gonna put any password I'm gonna go and connect into the server so don't worry about these two uh, things we're gonna solve them right now but the important thing is that you should see logged on so um, now we're gonna configure the server here we're gonna go here in the settings we're gonna go to welcome message you can put whatever shit you want maybe welcome to my server bitch or whatever so that's not very important that's just details um, here we're gonna go and select a uh, use custom port range here in the inside the passive mode settings we're gonna go and um, select you know the port range that we just opened the router I think it was 10 and the final one was 60,000 um, then we're gonna go here and retrieve external IP from this is the thing that it's gonna make the you know the location of our external IP in case you have a um, dynamic IP or whatever so uh, don't use external IP for local connections um, I'm gonna just uncheck that so I'm gonna go to security set settings make sure to have the required matching peer IP address this option um, marked um, uh, here we're gonna go and um, you know put listen on this port so it's 21 and here we're gonna change the options to 9999 and three of these options to connections timeout no trump from timeout and login timeout so we're just gonna pass the same uh, values and um, basically that's it so we're gonna go and okay and this um, special error message is not important so uh, now we're gonna make a, a user to connect uh, through the client so we're gonna go here inside this uh, little guy icon we're gonna make um, a new user, user. Uh, we're gonna make an ad uh, put whatever name you want probably I don't know um, I don't know um, T bag so teabag is gonna be the user name we're gonna make an OK and here we're gonna go and put whatever password you want uh, maybe I don't know uh, one two three four five six and we're gonna go to share folders and here we're gonna select whatever folder you want to share from this computer from the host computer to whatever users um, you want to make them uh, you, you want to give them permission to connect so basically you're telling the server to accept the users connecting your computer to access uh, which folder you want so for this for for this example I'm gonna use and, and share my uh, whole unit D 
So select the unit D and OK. So here we got an H, which which means that it sits as the home directory. Directory. So everybody that is gonna, I mean, T back this user when it connects to my server is gonna be able to browse through this uh, entire um, you know partition. This is the privileges that you want to grant your users. You can change it. They can only read. They can modify the files. They can delete the files. So uh, for the sake of the video, we're going to um, give the, the users all the permissions and activities to be allowed to do. So once you select all that, just click on OK and we should be ready to go. The server is done. We're just going to minimize it and make sure the server is running there. So, um, yeah, so now the computer is hosting the server, and now we're gonna go to this other computer that is completely remote. It has another IP, it's, it's completely um, stranger to our local network. It's not from the local network, uh, so that's very important. So, we're gonna, because almost 99% of the videos I've seen in tutorials in YouTube, they're just guys just testing the fucking server in their own fucking computer without actually testing it in, in in you know in remote connections which is the real objective of this ftp sharing so um so we're gonna go here in this computer we also want to install the client um the client is over already here installed into the laptop and here uh it's a pretty tricky part so first, obviously, we we want to identify the IP of the server computer, which um, I don't remember exactly which IP was. So we're going to check it out here. The IP was uh, this one. So we're going to put the IP of the server computer inside here. We're going to go into, into here, into this little icon there. You can click it or maybe going to go to file and site manager. Here inside manager, we're gonna go and um, <clears throat> and uh, pass the server IP there into the host field. Here we're gonna log on type. We're gonna change it. It's probably gonna be in an anonymous, but we're gonna change it in normal, and then just put um, whatever user we just put it, um, we just created in the server, which was uh, I think it was tbag, and the password it was one two. Three, four, five, six. So now we're gonna go here, which is very important. We're gonna go to transfer settings, and we're gonna activate the option here that it says activate, and then we're gonna go in OK. So now we are able to go once again into the, uh, you know, um, into this window, site manager, and um, basically you just want to uh, double click this. Um, you can select whatever name you want. Um, of the server. So uh, once you select this crap, just double click on it. First time you use it, it's obviously gonna tell you to to open the ports, probably. Um, I'm not sure how why it doesn't. It's not working. It should be working because everything is is working all right. Uh, yeah, as you can see, the we were able to connect to the computer perfectly well. So we are basically um, hosting the server in this computer and with this computer we're just connecting remotely. So here you can see that we are seeing all the files from this from the D unit of these computers. So we can check here that the, uh, the files actually exist. This is the original computer hosting the files and this is the client trying to download or upload whatever uh, things um, you want. So uh, it's Pretty cool. We're gonna try it again. We're gonna open the FileZilla once again. We're gonna go here, click on them, and click on new site or whatever site you want. Just want to uh, wait until the connection is done, and here you can see all the files showing up. So this is gonna be pretty handy if you want to share files uh, from a computer to another one, especially if you're um, remotely located. And you want to share um, files with uh, relatively ease, but now we're gonna try it in a local area network. So this this example was actually a remote location with different IPs. But what happens if you have the same IP? So we're gonna close the laptop here, 
and I'm gonna open up the other computer which is actually um, in the same network so these co these two computers as always if you've seen my previous videos if you're familiar with my channel you you can tell that these two computers are always connected in the same network so uh, we're gonna open the file seal in this computer now um, we're gonna go here as well and here you can see that it also has the public IP even though this computer is actually in the same network so let's try it let's see if, if with the public IP uh, it still connect. It still connects. So we're gonna change the user, which is was T bag. Uh, T bag, and the password, which was one two three four five six. Let's see if it works. All right. It says fail to retrieve directory listing let's see if we did something wrong here transfer settings is set to active let's try the local IP instead let's tr let's type the uh, the local IP of the of the server this was the IP actually okay and um, there you can see that we have the local IP now so let's see if it works and as you can see it works perfectly fine so that was a little example that I wanted to show you guys that if you type the local the the you know the public IP in the same network it's not gonna work remember in the same network you wanna type the local IP of the master computer but if you have an, uh, an external connection you obviously wanna type the the you know the public IP of the server computer so it's very simple so um, as you can see it works not only in LAN but uh, you can make a um, file sharing and online so I hope you really like it and uh, see you next time in the next video and have a great time bye make sure to subscribe and like